Hello everybody, welcome back to some more Plasma. Today I'm going to be showing you this drone thing that I built. I think drones are pretty cool and I've seen some drone light shows that they do where all the drones are in specific positions and uh, together they make a large image that they can show in the sky. So I thought I'd give that a try in Plasma and here I've created a rotating cube. It's just eight drones forming the image of a cube. Let's go ahead and go to nighttime to show you what it's like. Night's time, you can see the drones from anywhere. They're all remote control drones. And here is the central control panel with eight different transmitters on it. So they each send out the information for each drone. And over here I have a few different sliders. So the three sliders on the right side over here is X, Y, Z coordinates. You can physically move these drone positions anywhere that you want. It's still going to be the same spinning cube, but you can just move them around anywhere you want. So if you want to send them up higher, bam. The cube's up higher now. Let's bring that back down. No, 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 no. Right about, right about there. And of course, there's uh, for the x-axis, you can move it farther or closer. And for the z-axis, let's move it uh, back a little bit. Just a little bit, just a little bit. Right there. So I'm pretty happy with my spinning cube drone light show, but this is a little bit too easy. Uh, so over here, I have a speed meter, and I did something really cool with it. I mean, I think it's really cool where if you bring it down to zero, the drones stop in place. They just stop exactly where they are, and you can change the speed of the animation one way or the other way. If you want to send them in reverse, full speed, you can have the spinning cube go in reverse. So let's just leave that going full speed for the time being, because this other slider down here is the amount of tilt. And it's just a value from zero to five, but really that represents a 90 degree turn. So take a look at this spinning cube. We're gonna take this spinning cube and rotate the entire light show 90 degrees by flip, flip, there you go, flipping it over. <laughs> Drones kind of crashing into each other. Let's raise that up so that we can see it. There you go, the entire cube is now on its side and we're rotating this way. So if you wanted to have a slightly tilted spinning cube in the air, you just put the uh, slider somewhere halfway, and there you go. I'm still figuring out the math behind it. I was a little bit lazy with the programming, but it's a, it's a spinning cube light show, slightly tilted. So that's the thing that I really love about Plasma is like you can set out to build something and I built exactly what I wanted to build. It's amazing. So let's check out some of the programming, but before we do that, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta freeze these drones. I gotta do something about them, otherwise they're just gonna fly away. Uh, maybe if I just set this to zero. Zero. There you go. Freeze in place. You just stay there. Don't do anything too crazy. So the sketch isn't too, too complicated. A lot of what you see is just the LCD screens that, um, that just have to display numbers so that you can, you know, see what you're doing. The sliders just set different values, like for X, Y, Z, and they're paired up with a percentage mapper uh, to give different ranges, like for X, Y, Z, for example. Uh, the Y range is between 30 and 230 instead of negative 100 and 100, uh, just to make sure that it stays above ground. So all those values are fed into variables for the Lua program. Now there's one important variable to uh, just sort of keep in mind here. Uh, it's this variable called num. So this number starts at zero, uh, but every tick, it's going to have the value from this slider added onto it, which just goes from negative one to positive one. And this is the thing that sets the animation speed and direction. So if the slider is halfway, it's exactly zero, nothing gets added onto number, nothing's moving. If it's a value of one, that's full speed in the positive direction, negative one is full speed in the negative direction. And so that's fed into a math expression where it does that calculation and then writes the new value back into the variable for the next cycle. So every tick number is gonna be a different number. So on the side over here, all of the outputs are outputting a vector. It's an X, Y, Z coordinate, so they gotta go into a vector decomposer to send to the transceiver, send on channel one, two, and three. So each transceiver gets an X, Y, and Z position, and that's how there's eight drones. I tried to send an entire vector itself into one of the channels, but that doesn't seem to be allowed. It seems to only allow just a single number, not an entire vector, so I don't know. Maybe I'll figure it out in a future video. For the program, let's see the program. The start function does absolutely nothing. This function called drone position takes two arguments, i and c. Uh, we'll get back to that in a little bit, but basically the function just 
says where a certain drone needs to be. So this is the function that actually does everything. I'd like to call it do it, because it, it's, it's doing the thing. So every tick, <laughs> this function creates an object, a table called drones, uh, fills it with eight drones, and then for each drone, gives the drone itself an XYZ position. And that's where you can see the function is called. We're calling the drone by its number, and then one, two, three, is for XYZ. So if we go back to the function, you can see that the function is like, okay, we're gonna be working on drone number one uh, for the X coordinate or the Y coordinate. And here we're getting the value of that special number that we can change the speed of. Radius is the thing that defines how big our square actually is. So if you wanted to take this and uh, play around with the numbers a little bit, you could make a bigger square if you wanted to, a smaller square. You do run the risk of drones running into each other, but uh, they, do, they do settle themselves out after you know, a couple of accidents. Offset are the sliders that control the absolute XYZ position of the entire drone show. So it's a little bit lazy for programming, but basically what I did is I have a single point in 3D space somewhere, and around that point, on a flat plane, I have four drones spinning around in a circle. So that's a very easy two-dimensional thing to do, and I basically did that for the first four drones. So if it's the X coordinate that I'm working on in a single drone, I use cosine. If it's the Y or Z coordinate, I'm using sine function. So if you've ever played with a graphing calculator, and you checked out sine and cosine, you know that it's a wave function that just goes between 1 and negative 1, depending on what the X value is, like the input value. So that's what the number function is actually doing, and that's how we can control the speed. We count up by a little bit or a lot, or we can go negative by a little bit or a lot. So when we set that slider to zero, uh, like we did just before coming into this sketch, the number is staying exactly where it was before, and that's what freezes the drones in place. And then of course, we're taking that one or negative one and sending the drone outwards from that central point by the radius value. And here you can see there's a radius value for X, Y, and Z. And that's, that's what uh, the second argument is. Are we working on the X coordinate, the Y coordinate, or Z coordinate? And the offset for X, Y, Z. And that's just added on to whatever coordinate there is. So the math is basically pretending that the entire thing is at zero, 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 but then moves the entire thing by the offset. And here's where you can see where I was a little bit lazy, because uh, I only did the two-dimensional mathematics for the drones. So for the four remaining drones to make a cube, I basically did the exact same thing, but I added on some extra height to make the top of the cube. And it has to be a little bit complicated with uh, math and ATAN too, and like considering the, the radius of the cubes and all that, that's what allows the tilting of the cube. Because it's not just tilting the bottom four drones, I gotta also tilt the top four drones, but move them along the path that a tilted cube would move. So my laziness uh, came back to bite me in the butt a little bit. I really should have done just three-dimensional math to, you know, have a single point with eight points rotating around it. And I think that would have been a little bit better, but, you know, I got, I got it working. I did the thing that I was setting up to do, so it works. So after this loop is all done, you're left with the drone and its ID number with a full XYZ coordinate ready to go based on whatever that number was at the start, whatever these numbers are. So it's actually a very easy thing to output, like drones 1 is just a vector of XYZ coordinates and I can just send out the information for 8 drones. And that's one thing that I really love about Plasma is that you can create just about anything that you imagine with any level of complexity too, like I have the sliders to actively change what the program is even doing for these drone positions. I love that. How are my drones doing? They drifted off a little bit, but they snapped back to reality. There you go. Tilted cube! Oh, I don't think I actually mentioned. All of these drones are exactly the same. They're exactly the same thing. They have a directional indicator on them because the drone itself... Maybe I should just um, show you. Freeze. 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 Okay, you. So the drone itself is actually very simple. It gets the XYZ information from the transceiver, and it keeps track of its own position with a GPS tracker, which of course is XYZ as well. So we're doing a little bit of math to see the difference between our current position and target position, and that difference is fed directly into the thrusters for X, Y, and Z axis. The yaw is controlled by a directional indicator, so it's always going to be pointing north no matter what, and this is to make sure that uh, the directions for the X-axis 
and Z axis is always going to be like the positive X direction is going to be a positive thruster value and the negative X direction is going to be a negative thruster value. Whereas if the drone was turned 180, then all of a sudden the X axis is inverted, same with the Z axis as well. So to make sure that the drone is always going in the correct direction, uh, we have a directional indicator controlling the yaw of the drone, make sure it's always pointed north, so that the directions are always lined up with X, Y, Z. And yeah, that's it. That's that's all there is to a drone. So the big thing to actually like pay attention to with these drones is that the train sievert that they're receiving information from is a number between one and eight. Uh, so there's eight different train sievers on the the drone controller thing uh, that sends out eight different drone information. So you just spawn one of these drones in and you tell it what number drone it is. So all of these drones that I froze in the sky, they're all numbers one through eight. Anyway, I'm pretty happy with my drone light show. I was just hopping into Plasma and I decided to build something and it didn't take me too long. It was only like a couple hours. Which, by the way, I did stream on my Twitch channel. If you want to see some random live streams, I'm trying to stream on Twitch more. Maybe I'll stream on YouTube too. I don't know. But if you have any other suggestions for what I should build in Plasma, let me know down in the comments below. Let me know what you think about my drone light show. There's probably some improvements that I could do, so feel free to let me know what you think. Of course, leave a like and subscribe. Your support is very much appreciated. But that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in another one.